Women. They drive you spare, don't they? Anne always starts writing out a shopping list just as I leave the house. Then wonders why I'm nearly always late for work. The Sarge will do his nut if I'm late for the morning briefing. Especially as I'm the new boy here. My first posting after finishing training school two months ago. Johnny, my mate, he's been in the force for nearly four years. I've been going out with him on patrol, learning the ropes. I've got plenty to learn. And Johnny doesn't let me forget it. He's not a bad bloke, even though he does come the big brother bit. As a matter of fact, today's our last day together. Sorry, Sarge. He's transferring to the CID, and I'm going to learn about area work. Right. Stolen vehicle from Long Hill since 2200 yesterday. Four it's going to be a bit strange not coming to these briefings anymore. They've sort of become part of my daily routine. They keep us in the picture on what's happening on our beats. Everything from stolen cars and missing kids to road repairs and receptions at the town hall. And the other thing is the telephone kiosks are still getting carved up on the estates. I want each telephone kiosk checked at least once on your beat, record when and which kiosk you visited, and anybody hanging about, particularly youngsters, we want their names. Right, OK, off you go. It's the unexpected that keeps beat work interesting, whether you do it on foot or in a car. Not knowing what's around the corner, but ready for anything. See what I mean? And it's always bang in the middle of the road. It's going to be the day of the big shove again. No, madam. I don't mind pushing your car. After all, I'm a public servant, aren't I? And whatever the public say about us, most of them turn to a police constable in an emergency and expect him to know what to do. Panda 5 to control. Panda 5, go ahead, control over. Broken down vehicle, X-ray, Bravo, Papa, 231, Foxtrot. Location, Mill Street Junction, Willoughby Road. Lady driver requests AA attend. Panda 5, over. Panda 5, message received and understood. Control over. With his personal radio, the man on the beat is no longer on his own. He's always in touch with the station to pass back information or to get help if he needs it. I don't know why it is, but it's always Joe Soap who has to do the legwork. Well, Charlie Barlow there sits back in the car. He says it's good experience for me. We were doing the Sarge's routine check of phone boxes. Routine, did I say? Looks as if we may have interrupted a job here. You never quite know how many capers are nipped in the bud by the sight of a policeman. After all, it's better to prevent the crime happening than always turn up after the event. We'll turn the bits in for examination. They might give some clues. Panda 5, over. Panda 5, proceed to Frank's Cafe. Proprietor reports disturbance. Panda 5, over. Message received and understood. We're on our way. You've guessed it. I'm going in to sort it out on my own. More good experience, Johnny says. Experience, yeah. If landing right up to your neck in it is experience. He told me a couple of lorry drivers were creating a disturbance. It seemed to have all the makings of a right Barney. So, take control of the situation, the textbook says. Right, voice of authority bit. You two, out. Yeah, how would you like this grub? Yeah, cockroach duff, my favourite pudding. They'd paid for the grub and weren't going to leave until they got their money back. Could you blame them? Take control. I'd lost all control over the situation. Taken action before hearing both sides of the argument. Disturbance, my foot. I bet Bill's on his third cuppa by now. <laughs> Lovely. You've really landed yourself in it this time, mate. All right, all right, keep you cool, everyone. Not exactly caught on blur, but they'd scoffed most of it. If they'd like to leave their names and addresses, we'll see what we could do. As usual, it turned out that they didn't want to bother. Nor did the cockroach king. But he got it anyway. A report to the public health makes sure the next bloke doesn't get barbecued beetles a la maison. 
Could have been one of us two, couldn't it? Well, Billy boy, you'll know how to handle a situation like that in future, eh? Big head. What's he want? An MBE? OK, so I learned the hard way. And now I've moved over to area work, that sort of thing is all part of my job. Getting to know the cafes, people, shops, streets, kids, cars even. The house goes with the job. Anne and I moved in here when I was posted to this term. Oh, yeah. In case you're wondering what happened to all those Z cars you see on the box. Well, I prefer a bike when I'm out and around. You see more, hear more, and, well, it does keep the pot down a bit. Leaves our own car free for around shopping night. See, the great thing about being an area constable is that I can put in the hours that suit me and, and the job best. I decide which shift to work. It's my patch and it's left to my own initiative. I had six months in a place like that, at a desk job working for a computer. Every day, exactly the same routine. Believe me, bulldozers couldn't push me back into that desk. Not after the sort of variety you get in this work. This is Jim Parks, the regular area man I'm working with. He works from his home, and in place of the station briefing, he gets his information on his personal radio. Or sometimes the panda car brings a list of things that need checking, like stolen property, accidents, aliens, and firearms inquiries. What got me was seeing a WPC driving Johnny's Panda. Not that he'd have minded with that behind the wheel. Not bad. He'd never have asked for a transfer. Jim seems to know just about everyone in his area. In fact, it works both ways. Most people want to know him. Your local Bob is like the doctor or the vicar in these rural communities. Someone you come to with your problems. A whacking great fish in a small puddle. Which, I'll be honest with you, I go a bundle on. Of course, a lot of the time, Jim lets me go off on my own taking care of things in his area. This can be anything from reporting new traffic hazards, like this, and they tell us to conserve water, to controlling traffic at peak hours. The kids are already getting to know me, and their mums and dads too. That's what area work's all about. Hey, cheeky. There's always one, isn't there? Something Johnny doesn't have to put up with, down in the underworld. I'd started my CID work. After four years in the force, back to square one. A new boy again, and the bloke I was working with made sure I remembered it. Detective Sergeant Mike Edwards. If I made a muck up, he'd have my guts. His favorite expression. We were called to my first scene of crime, and he was the investigating officer. A load of whiskey had been hijacked. The driver and his mate knocked out, tied up, and left with the empty lorry. Both the drivers were hospital cases. One poor bloke was half dead from the beating they'd given him. You know, you read in the papers about the crime and the criminals when they're put away. But there's never much about the blokes that get duffed up in the process. Couldn't tell us much. Didn't know where he was or who'd done it to him. All he could tell us that there were six men and that the leader was dark, young, and wore a with it green jacket. They'd both had a go and been beaten up. His mate pretty badly. By the time the photographer and the scene of crime officer had gone over the lorry, they'd got a fair idea of the type of villain behind the job. No shortage of fingerprints, anyway. Meanwhile, Mike and I collected the debris from the driver's fingernails. You never know, we might have picked up something in the general Barney. Our job was to coordinate get together all the bits of information and try to make something out of it. We'd found about 50 clear fingerprints on the lorry and we sent them to headquarters for matching. Most of them would belong to workers at the shipping department, but there might be one or two left by the hijackers. At the same time, the forensic lab was classifying the scrapings taken from the fingernails of the driver. They told us they'd found fragments of a green material. This material possibly came from the with it jacket mentioned by the driver. So HQ started a countrywide investigation to try and find out where it was made. This meant contacting other police forces in places like Manchester and Liverpool, and even the Shetland Islands. As it turns out, this got us exactly nowhere, but it had to be done. It's all part of the routine. Meanwhile, we got the area men to turn the local boutiques over. And this is where I come back into the story, folks. Jim Park sent me off to make inquiries about green material at the only boutique in our area. You can buy hip gear right on the old village green these days. Not exactly Carnaby Street, but you've got to admit it's got atmosphere. Evening all. 
I asked her what they got in green this season. Gave her a description of the jacket and all the details we knew. Well, seems green wasn't that groovy right now. Not that yucky green, anyway. The only green one they dug out seemed more Liberace than a big butch hijacker, if you see what I mean, ducky. While Bill was chatting up Mary Quant, Mike and I were in the collator's office, checking on the likely tow rags. That's not the real villains, but the small-time crooks sorted out for us by the officer in charge. The driver was on the critical list, and it was likely to be a charge of serious assault. It boiled down to a list of about ten suspects, and it was our job to look them up. Mike thought that these two, Jeff Bridges and his mate Lofty, should be good for starters. Look, copper, I'm doing you a big favour talking to you. I don't have to, and you ain't got no warrant. So just show a little bit of respect or I'll put in a complaint. As you always like this in the mornings. I just want you to say hello to Constable Daniels here. Let him see what a couple of my favourite villains look like. Look, I've warned you, copper. What did you come here about? Not to see if you've been busy lately. Always busy. Got a steady job now, haven't I? Yeah, we both have. And take your hands off my booze. If you're thirsty, ask me, that's all. Where'd you get this? I bought it down the road, didn't I? We've got a receipt for it and all. I don't doubt it. Yeah. And I've certainly got a receipt for that. You don't touch it, that cost me a lot of bread. Yeah, it cost you a a nigger, that lot. Look, if you've got a bleeding warrant, OK, but if not... We'll then... soon get one if we have to. Now, stop wasting my time. Where were you both on Sunday night? Oh, God, here we go again. What is it this time? I just want to... Of course, we didn't find what we were looking for. Those two were far too fly. Me? I looked over their records. Partly because I collect records myself. Partly because I saw something. Something wrong. There was something very wrong happening on my patch right then. A boy, age seven, was missing. Kevin Black, his name was. He'd been missing since the morning, six hours. Seems he was sent off to the playground with an apple and a packet of crisps for his lunch while Mum went out to work. I talked to his mates. Seemed he didn't stay there long. He mentioned some man he had to see and walked off. Jim Parks was away on a training course, so it was all up to me. I was on my own. First, I searched the house to make sure young Kevin hadn't slipped back unnoticed. That's what they usually do. Then I searched the playground and checked with the other mums. No joy there, so I rang through for help. When the super heard about it, he didn't like it, not at all. Particularly that bit about the man Kevin had gone to meet. He collected Johnny's boss, the head of CID, and they belted straight out to the house. He questioned Mrs Black again. Who was this man Kevin had gone to see? Had he ever mentioned a strange man before? Mrs Black hadn't a clue, and was in a pretty bad shape by now anyway. So it meant a full-out search and everyone on duty until he was found. Except us. Our chief didn't call out the CID blokes until the next day. At that time, I was listening to one of my favourite groups, the Blue Jays, and chatting up the bird behind the counter. All in the line of duty, of course. You see, that was a Blue Jays LP I'd seen on Lofty's Hi-Fi called Visit to Birdland. I thought I knew every LP they'd made, but I'd never even heard of this one. Like I said, there was something wrong. I was right. She told me the Blue Jays' visit to Birdland record wasn't due for release until next month. So she helped me phone the record company. Marvellous the amount of cooperation you get from the public. I was wondering just what else we could cooperate on when I got through. As I thought, not only had Birdland not been issued, but a couple of crates of LPs, including this one, had dropped off the back of a lorry. So we went right back to see Jeff and Lofty. This time, there was no respect on either side, just straight aggro. We must have left them rattled. They'd both been hit in the bottle. This record isn't on sale for another two weeks. So how do you account for it being in your possession? You stupid Burke. Didn't I tell you? I was asked you both to accompany me to the station. All right, copper. You try and take me. <coughs> Guess which one I copped. <coughs> Watch out for the Whether they did the hijacking or not, we don't know. Yet. We're leaving them to think it over. We've all the time in the world now. Mike didn't exactly thank me, but he did say I might make a jack someday. Say in about ten years. Well, if you thought you were busy, mate, you should have been with us. Nobody got any kip that night.
I couldn't have slept anyway. Kept seeing the face of that kid. Now one of my kids on my patch. We did what we could that night, and when we found nothing, a major search operation was set up for the morning. I was with the major incident vehicle. It was too far from the HQ to manage an operation of this size from the main control desk. This is where the local Bobby's knowledge of the area becomes essential. We called out the diving team. Wouldn't mind having a bash at that myself. They train you. Mind you, it's hard graft. Five hours scouring the bottom and ten to one, all you come up with is... these. It takes skill to train those dogs, but handled properly, they do everything but write out parking tickets. They sniff out people, missing objects, stolen property, drugs, even explosives. And they're better than anyone at making arrests. Drew a blank here, though. Meanwhile, we had 200 photos of Kevin Runoff, and the detectives were out in force. Here we go again. I'm a police officer, madam. Have you seen this boy? Has any strange man been seen approaching children in the area? Either way, the answer was no. 12.30. I came home for my first meal that day. I was flattened my uppers. But you know how it is when it's a lost kid. There's nothing you won't do. Funny thing, it was Anne who gave me the first real lead. The old girl next door told her that Kevin sometimes played with a couple of boys down at the end of our road. I didn't know he came out this far, way beyond the three-mile search area. You know, one day I'll actually get to eat those bangers. They said he came out on the bus, then walked over the footpath to the local flying club. Hooked on planes, they said. Wants to be a pilot when he grows up. Even his mum didn't seem to know that. That's why I like living right in my area. You find out what's going on. I phoned in, got the super to agree to me following this up, and took my car round to the airfield. I asked the chief flying instructor if he'd met Kevin. He didn't recognise the face, but said he often talked to kids who came to see the planes take off. You couldn't keep them out anyway, so it was better to chat them up, make sure they kept off the tarmac and didn't get their heads mixed up with the props. We had a look round the airfield. We checked just about everywhere we could think of. On the planes, under the planes, inside them. Have you seen a kid round here? He said the hangar door had been locked since yesterday, but I asked him to open it. Had to cover every possibility. last we'd found young Kevin. He was dirty, tired, hungry and a bit frightened, but otherwise quite perky. He'd gone in to play Biggles and hidden when the hangar was locked up. And the man he'd been to see was the chief flying instructor, who couldn't even remember his face. Be great if every missing child incident ended this way, only they don't. That's what we're here for. Somehow, I feel like I've really earned this. It's the first time Bill and I have had a chance of a Saturday drink together since we changed jobs. And we've got plenty to talk about. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, he's not kidding. Plenty. Mind, if you get the chance to combine business with a little pleasure. Like I said at the beginning, in this job, anything can happen. And it usually does.